It's December 26th, 1908, and world's heavyweight champion Tommy Burns defends his title in Sydney, Australia against Jack Johnson. Here's Tommy Burns getting himself into the best shape of his entire career. In nine days, Tommy will defend his title against the scourge of the heavyweight ranks, Jack Johnson. And Tommy knows that this is going to be the fight of his life. Here's champion Burns, the shorter of the two men, training with the fine heavyweight Al Kaufman, whom he sends to the canvas with a good right hand. Watch closely. Johnson is training 17 miles away at Rush Cutters Bay. Even the sedate Australian sports writers have been pulling out all of the stops in describing Johnson's workouts throughout his training period. There has been a general consensus of opinion that Johnson combines perfect defense and balance with an offensive punching attack which leaves little to be desired in a professional fighter. This is the scene at Rush Cutters Bay in Sydney, Australia at one o'clock in the afternoon as an electric excitement has captured the fans as they prepare to watch Burns make the 12th defense of his heavyweight championship. This is how Tommy Burns appeared as he was introduced as the defending heavyweight champion of the world. Never was a champion more ready to defend his laurels. In round one, Tommy Burns, to the left of your screen, moves out and boxes cautiously. Johnson clinches with Tommy and smiles to ringsiders. Burns looks almost like a little boy compared to the 212-pound challenger. But while he's not a heavyweight by the normal standard of height, there have been 50 professional heavyweights mostly over six foot tall, with all of their height lying horizontal on the canvas, knocked flat by this same Tommy Burns. Johnson lands a hard right and forces Tommy to the ropes. Johnson rushes in and scores with a punishing left at the end of round one. In rounds two, three, and four, Johnson merely played with the heavyweight champion. He would laugh and actually talk to the crowd as Burns was hitting to the stomach. It was Johnson's way of demonstrating he had absolutely nothing to fear from the little heavyweight champion. Here in round five, Johnson has no trouble in tying his man up. Jack Johnson was born in Galveston, Texas on March 31st, 1878. At 30 years of age, he's three years older than champion Burns. Johnson is six foot, one and a half inches tall and weighed in for this fight at a beautifully proportioned 212 pounds. Burns stays at long range, looking for an opening. Early in his professional career, Johnson was nicknamed Little Arthur. He looks almost like a giant next to the little man he's facing.
As we come to the end of round five, it's apparent that Burns is almost at an insurmountable disadvantage against this magnificent fighting machine, Jack Johnson. In rounds six and seven, Johnson scored heavily on the inside with ripping punches to the body and hard rights to the head. Here in round eight, Johnson rushes in and holds Burns as he talks to ringsiders, laughing all the time. Johnson has been after this heavyweight title fight for over two years. He hurled challenge after challenge at Burns to no avail. Johnson employed the unique strategy of purchasing a ringside seat at every one of Burns' title defenses. As Tommy fought, Johnson would sit there screaming insults, taunting the champion. His high voice stood out like a beacon light at ringside when Burns fought Philadelphia Jack O'Brien. At Dublin, when the champion beat Jim Roach, Johnson was there screaming. Again in Paris, when Burns knocked out Joey Smith, and finally in Sydney, when Burns disposed of Bill Squires. It was then, in Sydney, Australia, that the champion could take no more. simply can't do anything on the inside with this bigger, more powerful challenger. Tommy Burns' real name is Noah Brousseau. A French-Canadian by birth, he was born June 17, 1881, in Hanover, Canada. Good right uppercut. Another ripping right uppercut by Johnson. Uppercuts, hooks, all punishing blows. Johnson calmly looks down at Tommy, talks to the champion, taunting him. He wants Burns, as well as everyone, to know that this is no fight. This is a picnic. See how Johnson practically ignores the champion on the inside at the end of round eight. In rounds 9 and 10, Johnson simply overwhelms the champion. Going into round 11, it looked practically hopeless for Tommy. Johnson pressing forward, landing short punches, holding Tommy in the clinches. Burns unable to do anything against the heavier, stronger, taller challenger. Johnson turned professional 11 years ago, in 1897. He had 10 professional fights when, in 1901, he was KO'd in three rounds by Joe Schuwensky. But following that contest, Johnson KO'd 25 opponents in the next seven years. He has met and defeated all of the great fighters of his time, including George Gardner, Sam McVie, Joe Jeanette, Sam Langford, and the great Bob Fitzsimmons. Johnson closes in, completely tying up the champion. He forces Burns back in the clinches and literally handles the champion with ease. As round 11 comes to an end, there is almost a general feeling of compassion for the impossible task which Burns has undertaken. Round 12 was all Jack Johnson. 
In round 13, it appeared as though the police were going to step in and stop the fight as a result of Burns' weakened condition and the terrible beating he was taking. Here in round 14, Johnson rushes in, lands an uppercut, three left hooks, a tremendous barrage of punches, lefts and rights which have Burns helpless. At this very moment, in the early seconds of round 14, the police shut off the motion picture cameras and stepped into the ring awarding the heavyweight championship of the world to Jack Johnson. Here, in slow motion, you can see the blistering attack. Burns was absolutely defenseless just seconds before the police stopped the motion picture cameras and entered the ring to halt this very one-sided fight. Jack Johnson becomes heavyweight champion of the world December 26, 1908.